Okay, how you doing? We're going to talk about taking something in standard form and putting it in the vertex form for a quadratic function. So I've got f of x equals a times the parentheses of x minus h, quantity squared plus k, which therefore h and k represents the vertex of my function. So what I now have is this problem. It says f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 6x minus 5. So what I need to do here is that I need to take out a problem here when I factor it out that it allows me to create something with this quadratic and some constant value outside. So the way that I'm going to take a look at that is that in my, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this, okay? And I need to have the leading coefficient be a positive 1 for me to do this. Uh, and the only way you can really do this is doing it by completing the square because you need to have a square and you don't have one, so you need to create one. So the way I take a look at this is first things first is I'm going to factor out a negative 5. And when you factor something out, you're really thinking about just divide each of these terms by that value. And that's what you get left on the inside and put the value that you divided on the outside. So in this case, if I'm factoring out a negative 5, okay, what is going to be on the inside? Well, negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. So this is going to be x squared. So that takes care of my positive, right? There's my positive 1. Now, what is 6 divided by negative 5? Well, it's negative 6 fifths. So negative 6 fifths. And that's what's going to be left on the inside. And that's still going to have an x. And that, the way you can know this is negative times a negative gives you the positive. And, ne and 5 divided by 5 is 1. Well, 1 times 6 gives you that 6x. Okay? So if you're ever trying to figure out what number am I going to put in, just write the division of what the answer is to that division in simplest form. And that will be what it is. So there's this value. Minus 5. So again, that constant just comes along for the ride, and it will be manipulated and changed. Okay, so now I've got this function that says negative 5 times this value. And here's the, the, the function that I'm now going to use completing the square form. And the way that I do that is that I come over here and, and define the b value. Remember that the b was just going to be, uh, you take this middle term, okay, and you just divide it by uh, 2. Okay, so this middle term divided by 2, so the b... Okay, is really just equivalent to, in this case, all right, is uh, negative 6 over 5, and what we're going to do with that is that we're going to divide it by 2, which is really multiplying by a half. So, because I have a fraction, I'm just taking negative 6 over 5, multiplying it by 1 half, and what you get there in reduced form is negative 6 over 10, but negative 6 over 10 reduces into negative 3 fifths. So now I have negative 3 fifths. Okay, and then I use the b squared. So b squared is just squaring this b value, so negative 3 squared is 9, and 5 squared is 25, so then I have my b squared. So this value is the important one. Uh, this we will use later as well, um, but this is the important value that I need to put into this equation. And remember, the important thing is, is that I can't change that whatever I plug into here, it must simplify back up into this original function of negative 5x squared plus 6x minus 5. It has to go back to that. So the problem with that is, is if I add a number in here, it will change that value. So I have to add a number in that doesn't change the value of anything. And the only number that you can add that won't change the value of anything is 0. So again, like I said, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in 9 25ths, and I'm going to also put in a negative 9 25ths, because then that's really like I'm adding 0. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to change the look without changing the overall value of the function. So what I get here is I get f of x is equal to negative 5 times the quantity. I have x squared minus the 6 fifths x. And then I put the plus 9 20 fifths minus 9 20 fifths. And I put minus 5 on the outside. Now again, remember that I put it on the inside here. Okay. Now the thing is, is that this right here isn't a completed square. Okay. So if I want to complete the square here, I need to get rid of this term so I can write this in its square form. And the way I do that is I just distribute the negative 5 to that value because then that removes it from the actual parentheses. So I then get negative 5, and I'm going to write the completed square. I'm going to skip a step here. Um, but all I'm doing, I want you to note, is that I'm taking this value right here, this x squared minus 6 uh, fifths x plus 9 over 25, and writing it as its completed square, which is x okay, minus 3 fifths the quantity squared. So x minus 3 fifths the quantity squared is what that completed square is, okay? And then I 
negative 5 times negative 9 25ths is going to be a positive, okay? And the positive that I get there in this particular equation is 9 over 5, okay? And I still have this minus 5 out here that came along for the ride. And then at this point, I can just, you, know, you can just clean it up by sticking your calculator as what does this value simplify to. And you'll get that this is negative 5 times x minus 3 fifths squared. And when you stick that into the calculator, you end up getting that this is negative 16 over 5. And what I've now done is that I've got this function that was in standard form here, and I did a couple steps by completing the square. And that left me to this value right here that that is now in vertex form. And if I want to know the vertex of this quadratic function, the vertex is 3 fifths, and it's not negative now because the original function was a negative. So this h has to be positive, so this is 3 fifths. And this is a negative 16 over 5, so that leaves it there. So the vertex for this function okay, is 3 fifths, comma, negative 16 over 5. And there's the vertex for this particular quadratic function. Um, so I hope that helps with any type of homework problem you're doing. Um, if you have any questions, or uh, please leave a comment and I'll respond back to it. Um, but I would say for now that the most important step is this value of actually adding zero. Okay, it's the you know the identity of zero. Whereas if the additive identity of zero property states that if you add zero to something, it won't change its value, and that's the important part here because we can't change the value of this function, but we can change the look by adding in zero. Um, so I hope that helps with any type of homework problem you're doing.